on the mound for Oklahoma, but Jill, she really doesn't play like it. <laughs> she does not. I remember the last game she was almost perfect, just pitched so well for Oklahoma. She threw three scoreless innings, gave it one hit, didn't walk any one, and struck out six. That was against LMU. Only a freshman. She's from Nebraska, and she just has so much confidence. I mean, after the game, I was I was talking to my parents, and I said I could not take my eyes off of her. She just has this presence in the circle. Again, just a freshman as the first pitch comes in. Perez swings and fouls it off left field side. This is going to be quite the test for her and really a testament to how much Gasso trusts her freshman, throwing her into a game like this so early in the year. I love this strategy by Coach Gasso. Put in your freshman, see what she can do against a top five team, the third best team in the nation see what she does and also it's not easy for UCLA to come in and see a pitcher who you have never faced before and maybe haven't heard a whole lot about obviously a Jordy Ball a, a big name in the high school recruiting class but they have not seen her live and it's always to the pitcher's advantage when that happens counts one and one as here comes the next offering high and wide ball National Gatorade Player of the Year last year. Her record was 27 and 0. She had an ERA of 0.10. We mentioned this yesterday, but it's just worth noting. Another stat, 27 hits in 137 innings pitched in her senior year. She is as standout as they come. Called strike. Paints the outside corner. Evens the count. Jordy Ball was also the number one prospect in the class of 2021. And you're right, she was the Nash Gatorade National Softball Player of the Year. Also the Gatorade Nebraska Player of the Year, not only in 2020 and 2021, but 2019 through 2020. 2-2. Two -two. Comes in low. You know, we're talking about ball, but Perez herself has just been a huge part of UCLA and what they're trying to do offensively, which is basically have Perez good in reach. Those are more contact hitters. And then you've got Wiz, Bradley, Jordan, all in the mix to try to knock them home. But we saw Perez go yard in the last game against Mississippi State, so she can do a little bit of everything. She absolutely can. You're not going to see a lot of home runs from her, but a few. Ball wins out, a swing and a miss, and Perez goes down. Again, chatting with those waiting on the on-deck circle just to kind of clue them in to what's going on with Ball as Kelly Gooden, Gooden will step up for the Bruins. It looked like a screwball from Ball there. That's an, a pitch that's going to go to the outside part of the plate against lefties and usually has a little bit of a uh, rising movement to it as well. Here's Gooden, shows bunt, pulls it back, it's a strike. Looks this like, is uh, Gooden's fourth year with UCLA. She's a redshirt junior. Batted 342 last year for the Bruins. So there's going to be a meeting in the circle right now. Looks like the umpires will come over to talk to Ball. And I have to wonder, Jill, does this have something to do with what was going on with Ball yesterday and the crow hopping stuff? I think so. It has to be the crow hopping. That's the only explanation. And I believe that last strike is going to be called a ball because of that. So it should be a 1-0 and count. Uh, so crow hopping is when both of your feet are airborne at the same time. You must keep one foot on the ground at all times as a pitcher. Works back with a strike there. That one, a, a heater from ball. But, you know, we mentioned this with Mississippi State. She is a freshman, and so some of these things maybe weren't noticed by umpires in high school. And now that you're at the big, big show with Oklahoma, 
there's going to be an extra emphasis on crow hopping and things of that nature. That is more than likely the case. It can be difficult for a freshman. You see this a lot where a freshman kind of gets nitpicked a little bit because it wasn't caught in high school, but now she has to get used to being watched at all points. And, you know, these umpires are at an elite level as well where they are going to catch it. So it's just on ball to make sure that she stays on point and does not let it affect her. Gooden, Haxon misses. She's gone. Two straight strikeouts for Ball to start her outing. Exact same approach against Perez. Ball trying to go outside against the slap hitters. It's a little bit of a rising movement for the outside corner. Yeah, and we saw this yesterday against Mississippi State when she got called for the crow hopping could have easily rattled most freshmen. But it's not rattling her. It didn't rattle her this time around, able to earn that strikeout. Except Gooden's still at the plate, so we have the count wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. Guess we have the count wrong, so must have uh, been sorry about that. Must have, must, have been, must have been a few pitches that were called for crow hopping. So the issue with crow hopping, okay. especially with the angle that we have from remote broadcasting is it's the corner umpires who are going to see it because you have to see it from a side angle like we have here. So that's why we might have our count off from those calls. Off outside. It would be awkward here if it uh, ends up being a runner on. But yeah, so like we said, obviously it must have been all of her first pitches then. Um, Right, but full count is now correct. We saw the home plate umpire show that. All right, so it is a full count. Let's redo this. This one chopped, charging in, throw to first. She's gone. It's not a strikeout, but Gooden is most certainly retired as it is out number two. A great job by the shortstop Lions coming in. She's almost exactly at the pitcher's mound at the circle to catch that ball. It's tough to get the spitty good and out, but the Oklahoma defense so good against slappers. Brings up Aaliyah Jordan. First pitch. Called strike outside corner. Jordan now in right field today for UCLA. Jordan has a lot of pop in her bat. We didn't see it in the game earlier today. She doesn't have a hit yet, but definitely expect to see some today and later on this season. Off outside as Jordan has now played 205 games in a UCLA uniform. One of those, you know, key returners, season vets. UCLA lost a big chunk of players. However, they returned so many good ones. They earned, again, a number three preseason pull number. Swing and a miss. Right, last game we spoke about how Rachel Garcia, Bubba Nichols are no longer in this lineup for UCLA, but they are so good at recruiting that they have players like Aaliyah Jordan and Kinsley Washington who can step up. Jordan fouls one off, third base side. Diving for that was Jones. She nearly hit the some of the fencing back there as this Oklahoma defense is really led by Jones and Lions and this infield is is a pretty big deal for Oklahoma. They've well, <laughs> they haven't allowed a run yet. Right, both these teams have not allowed a run yet this season. Of course, it's opening week. Lots of season left, but whoever <laughs> wins this game is going to be able to put that feather in their hat that they were able to be the first team to score against the opponent. 
Called strike, outside corner. Jordan goes importantly, the defending national champion, Sooners, will be at the plate. Diari Jennings lead things off for the Sooners. She's been a superstar, and she'll go head to head with a UCLA pitcher with a ton of experience in Holly Acevedo. Acevedo, a red shirt senior. This is her fifth year with the Bruins. So Acevedo brings a lot of experience. Again, her fifth year with UCLA. Last year, she made 16 appearances in the circle, 12 of them for starts. And she went 8-1. and one. Had a 1.99 ERA. And 5.86 strikeouts per seven innings. Insane numbers for her. And again, you have to consider that as a 0-2. Jennings, skies high into left field and camping under it to make the out is good in. Boy, a sigh of relief for UCLA that one. If there was any sort of wind, might have been out of here. Absolutely, she just got underneath that pitch. That 0-2 pitch, not what you want from a pitcher. It was a little bit too good. On 0-2, you want to get a swing and a miss or you're trying to get them to chase to make not so great contact. That one was <laughs> solid contact by Jennings. Yeah, I was going to mention the fact that this is true for Oklahoma, but for UCLA, they're in the Pac-12. And when you look at all the teams ranked right now in the Pac-12, Washington, Arizona, Oregon, Arizona, Arizona State, and then, of course, UCLA, and Stanford is getting votes as well. So it's just nonstop in conference for the Bruins. Right, if we're, Pac-12 statistically is a tougher conference than uh, the Big 12, but Oklahoma still has a lot of tough competition, specifically Oklahoma State. Jocelyn Allo at the plate, the 0-1. This one a rocket in the left field. Scoots by the defense, and Allo with the first hit of the game for the Sooners. Allo not doing too much with that pitch. I believe it's an inside part of the plate. She's able to get her hands inside. Yep, inside part of the plate there. Able to get her hands inside. Rolled over just a little bit where it hit the ground, but perfectly placed between the shortstop and third baseman. Kinsey Hansen will step up, an All-American for the Sooners on the preseason player of the year watch list with three of her teammates, including Alo, who's at first, hacks and misses at the first pitch she sees. One note more when we were talking about earlier, Pac-12 versus uh, Big 12. Coach Gasso has led Oklahoma to the postseason in every single season, she has been the head coach, 27 seasons. Going for two, they just go with the force out there as it just goes Kura to Vines. However, it does eliminate Alo from the base pass and Hansen reaches on a fielder's choice. So what I'm essentially trying to say without being rude to Oklahoma is that UCLA does face a tougher competition in terms of conference play and some people might disagree with me with that but that's just what I see statistically in the Pac-12. And that is why Gasso schedules games like this. It's important for development too as Jada Coleman takes the first pitch low. Coleman Another All-American, sophomore. You know, sometimes everybody talks about Tiara Jennings as they should, but Coleman has been just as good and can win games for the Sooners single-handedly. So that combo, just being in their second year, is just so huge for this Oklahoma team. Right, they have the ability to lead the next generation of Oklahoma following 
uh, Aloe, who should be graduating after this year. But you said Coleman, she batted 444 last year as a freshman. Azevedo on the mound for UCLA, working a 2-0 count. Pitch off outside. Again, runner on and Hansen reached on a fielder's choice. Just one hit so far in this game for either team. Yeah, just in the bottom of the first. Here's the pitch. Called strike. Hits that top half. And another opportunity for the UCLA hurler. Moore, you mentioned how there's only one hit so far this game, but it is only the first inning. But it's unusual for these two teams to either only have one hit or no hits through the first inning. Oklahoma last game had three hits in the first. Unsuccessful bunt attempt by Coleman. Oh, that Gasso, this meant a lot to her. And obviously worked out that UCLA wanted to be a part of this as well. Right, smart for both Gasso and Coach Inouye Perez to understand how important this tournament is for their athletes who played under Campbell and also for the community of softball. It is such a small, close-knit community where there are some athletes on this team who I've known personally or we played against each other uh, or I've even coached and helped out with. It's such a small community that Mark Campbell needed to be honored in a special way. Lions throws to Snow and 5-3. Delaney Wiz goes down. So, ball so far, four faced, four retired on the mound for the Sooners. She has been so good. Aside from the crow hopping every now and then, so what you can see there, her back foot did not leave the ground, and that is how you avoid a crow hopping uh, call. Of course, with her leg so far back, sometimes that momentum is a little bit hard to stop, but that's something she just needs to work on. High and in, and Maya Brady at the plate right now. Another stellar sophomore. She's a redshirt sophomore, so she's got two years, well, one and a half, because first year 2020 obviously was not a full season, but she spent some time, of course, with UCLA, had a breakout season as a freshman, and now she's just been a steady hand, able to knock in a bunch of runs, 66 total in her career. Again, a redshirt sophomore for UCLA. And her entire family are athletes, as you know. Uh, Tom Brady is her uncle, uh, just recently retired. But more importantly, her mother, Maureen Brady, a All-American pitcher at Fresno State. So softball runs in her blood. Yeah, just athlete on athlete on athlete. Not a, wasn't on the cards for me. Two banker parents don't think I had a chance. Swing and a miss. <laughs> I, uh, I had a dad who played college basketball. I had a little little help there. <laughs> and Brady just trying to get something going here against Ball. And so far, no dice for anyone on the Bruins. Lots of time. Slices one foul. And remember, this is the first time they are seeing Ball pitch ever. They might have some film on her in high school, but that might not help them to where they need to. It'll be interesting to see how the rest of the lineup adjusts because it's not just going to, they're not going to wait until Perez comes back up at the top of the order. Perez, Gooden, and Jordan, they are all telling the rest of the lineup what they have seen and what the movement and speed is like, and the rest of the lineup is going to adjust from that. Off outside from ball and finally a base runner for UCLA. It's Maya Brady who draws the walk and she is the go ahead run. And that is the first walk of her collegiate career that ball has given up. 
Yeah, she's was so perfect. Had a great showing yesterday against Mississippi State. But now this is, you know, a way for Gasso to see what she has, correct those mistakes, and then come postseason, which pretty sure Oklahoma will be there. Her freshmen have already done this, and so probably just helps them feel a little more comfortable as Washington slices one foul left field side. It's important for a young pitcher to get this kind of experience before the postseason so that way they feel cool, calm, and collected under pressure. And to be able to face players like Kinsley Washington at the plate, who is a fifth-year freshman, has a very high softball IQ, you are not going to fool her on a lot of pitches. You're going to have to beat her. This is on the outside of the plate. 1-1 one, one count as Ball, a part of the number one recruiting class in the nation to come in with Patty Gasso and the Sooners just, you know, brought in a couple of transfers. And of course, Ball was really the highlight of that. But so many good players on this Sooners roster that uh, they just keep adding on at this point. Right, and Coach Gasso said that she expected Ball to have immediate impact and again, I really like how she's throwing the freshman into the fire against a top-ranked team. And again, I really do think that it's going to throw off UCLA as it has so far, aside from Maya Brady drawing a walk. Along with Ball, brought in Alyssa Brito, swing and a miss from Oregon, second team, all Pac-12, and she's fighting for that kind of final outfield spot this season and then we saw Hope Troutwine go yesterday for the Sooners as a transfer, a grad student from North Texas. And so just brought in, you know, freshmen like Ball, transfers as well, just taking advantage of what's ever out there for Oklahoma. But now Ball gets a swing and a miss again. Three strikeouts for her right now as she is just off to the races in her start with Oklahoma. I'm not sure if that pitch that she's throwing to left-handed batters is a screwball with spin, upward spin, or if it's a straight rise ball that she can locate on the outside corner against the lefties. Either way, whatever it is, it's effective. Two gone, runner at first. Savannah Pola at the plate. Lays off. A freshman versus freshman matchup. Pola has already been effective for the Bruins, a two RBI single to start off the game earlier today. Hits one up the third base line. It trickles in. And looks like everyone will have to retreat. Foul on that one. Otherwise, Probably could have scored Brady or at least put her at third. But uh, another go around here. Not a bad idea by Pola to just try to slap it down the line there, especially with how Ball's nicking the outside corners. Swing and a miss. A big hack on it there from Pola. Ball sets up, here's the pitch, got her. Four strikeouts for Jordy Ball. Crowded, sold out crowd for the number one versus number three matchup in the Mark Campbell Invitational. Just a huge game for both of these teams in the preseason. You usually aren't going to be facing uh, the top teams in your preseason, but of course this Invitational means a lot to the softball community, both 
Oklahoma Sooners and UCLA Bruins felt they needed to be a part of this Invitational. And, of course, because of that, we get an amazing matchup, and both teams are tested early on here. As a veto back out there, Lions acts and misses that it's a pitch low in the dirt. Lots of movement on that one. Lions, of course, defensive player of the year last year in the Big 12. She is pretty much the everyday shortstop for Oklahoma and uh, a quiet leader, but a leader nonetheless for the Sooners. The Sooners have one of the best middle infield combos in the nation, if not the best between Jennings and Lions, both All-Americans and both just so smooth and quick up the middle. As a veto, next offering. All right, three to one. The count right now. Here's the pitch. Called strike. Ooh, Lions wanted to take a step towards that first baseline, but instead she'll come back. We got a full count here. So it's Lions, Johns, and Donahue all do up. Close pitch there. Borderline pitch, but call goes Escobedo's way. Apologize. I think we glitched out for a second. Lions goes down on an infield hit. Throw over to first, and she is gone. Brings up Jana Johns at the plate here for the Sooners. Too high of a pitch from Acevedo. Just one hit in this game for the Sooners, which they're not used to. I mentioned this earlier, but you know, got off to hot starts, specifically against Mississippi State. Alo went yard. She was the second batter in the the entire game, so she brought home Jennings and made it two to nothing right away. And then, of course, in a 14 to nothing win over UC Santa Barbara, just. Red hot, Jennings went yard the second she got up there. Not against LMU though. That so far has been the toughest game for the Sooners. The Lions took Oklahoma to five, or excuse me, to seven innings. They went the, the distance. Final score was five to nothing. It took a while for the offense to get hot for Oklahoma. And uh, obviously this is, these are the best group of pitchers that UCLA will face in this tournament. I mean, Oklahoma, excuse me. Right, Oklahoma did have seven hits against LMU, but it was through six innings. They didn't score a run until the third against Mississippi State. They had eight hits in three innings. One gone, Lions grounded out as this one from John smoked. In the left field, bounces towards the corner. And they'll say it was foul. Oh, she was so close there. Maybe a foot away from that being fair. She turned on that ball really well. It was an inside pitch, just couldn't muscle it fair. 
sometimes nothing you can do with an inside pitch like that except try to make as best contact as you can and there's just sometimes no way to make that go fair. Got another crack at it. Here's the pitch, lightly taps it foul. Great change up by Acevedo there. But also a good job by Johns to be able to recognize it and just tip it foul. Stays alive. Johns, wax one, foul again, third base side. A long at bat by Johns. You can see her experience at the plate. And Acevedo giving her a lot of off speed pitches to work with. Wouldn't be surprised if she tries to come inside again with a fastball after back to back change ups. And just the bottom of the second inning. 3 2. This one flies out back at the center field wall. It soars over, hits the wall. And that is an extra base hit for Johns. Great job by Johns. That pitch up a little bit too high, probably. Acevedo would have wanted either higher or a little bit lower. It's right at the letters. And Johns able to muscle it. It hits off the wall. Maya Brady gives good chase, just could not get there in time. A great piece of hitting by Johns. So a runner in scoring position for Oklahoma, of course. It is the go-ahead run right now. As here comes Mackenzie Donahue, who, by the way, was just the bane of UCLA's existence last year. In the College World Series, she went yard twice against the Bruins. That was the game that ended UCLA's postseason and season, if you will, two home runs on June 5th. It's one in the right, fouled off. In fact, Donahue, so good, she was made named, or rather placed on the Women's College World Series All-Tournament team. And she also was a Big 12 All-Academic First team. But her improvement from her freshman year to sophomore year is astronomical. She only got 145 freshman year and last season, her sophomore year, 438. Offering to her. This comes in a little high. Of course, she has a chance to grab another RBI here. And again, the Sooners are not most likely going to have the offensive explosion that they've been having because they're facing such a good staff. And so everything counts here in this 1-3 game. That pitch looked close. I think that could have been called a strike if uh, the catcher Wiz would have caught it with her glove fingers up instead of like a basket catch. Close pitch there. But you're right, Mora. Oklahoma needs to fight for every single run, and UCLA does too at that. The pitch. Skied up, fouled. Heads towards the stands. Lots of people here. Late afternoon, sun's still out. Nice little souvenir. Love to see it. No, it just, it's important to mention as, you know, we saw that young girl catch that ball. I mean, these types of tournaments and, you know, it's just happening in locations and being such a big deal. It's really important for growing the sport. And, uh, you know, with that catch, we might have just saw future UCLA Bruin 
Get your Oklahoma Sooner out there, and it's a big deal to have women's sports at this level. Absolutely, it's 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 what I did growing up. It's what my travel team did, and the All Star Little League All Star team did. We after we we won All Stars when I was in I think fifth grade or something like that. We went to watch the 2008 uh, Olympic team compete at this stadium, the the road to Beijing. Uh, my travel team, we went to watch UCLA, UCLA a lot, Fullerton State, just teams that we aspire to be a part of and to learn and grow as athletes to be able to watch elite athletes on the field. Donahue hits one in a center field. Brady gets under it. But sliding into third is Johns. She tags up and gets there. So a runner 60 feet away for the Sooners. So not a sacrifice fly out for Donahue, but a productive out. And the throw a little bit off from Maya Brady. But Johns, I think, also had a really good jump on it. Actually, if I was the third baseman, Kura, I would have been on the other side of third base. She might have had to move for that offline throw, but she should have been on the other side of third base to receive the ball and be able to cut off Johns. Taylor Snow at the plate. Former OC Batbuster played for Mark Campbell and is over at first today for Oklahoma. She's didn't play in game one against LMU, but then played against Mississippi State. And Gasso's entrusted her right now into the lineup for the Sooners. That one slips behind. Staying put is Johns. Snow didn't bring a lot of offense in the last game against Mississippi State. However, she is a great first baseman for the Sooners. Can pick out balls from the dirt, make nice stretches, and is smart with her approach. Looks like a circle meeting as Acevedo having a conversation with her teammates, getting fist bumps all around. Just trying to get out of this inning unscathed. I'm sure Lisa Fernandez, the pitching coach for UCLA, just went out to kind of reset Holly Acevedo. I mean, she just threw a ball in the dirt and it got by. The catcher whiz and that could have scored the first run of the game for Oklahoma. So she probably just went out there and kind of reset. You can see them all giggle a little bit, laugh, and make sure they're not too tight. They need to stay loose. Two zero up the third base side. It slips through. Oklahoma takes the lead. RBI single from Snow. Snow did not have to do a lot for that. She took an outside pitch, found some grass in left field. Great piece of hitting. You can see it here. Just throws her bat out there. Gets by the diving shortstop Perez. Good effort, but unable to hold Johns at third base. And that is the first run scored against UCLA this season. Yeah, prior to this game, outscoring opponents as a first pitch in to Riley Boone. So prior to the last game, outscoring opponents 39 to nothing. And then of course they end up beating Mississippi State eight to nothing. So they add on to that and 47 to nothing. UCLA was outscoring opponents. It's still a crazy mark, even if you add the one, but of course, down for the first time this season are the Bruins. And it wasn't these big hits from Oklahoma. It started out with forcing Lions to ground out, then the double by Johns, the biggest hit of the day. And Snow it wasn't a hard hit ball, just able to muscle it into left field to score Johns. Boone slaps one. Gets into center field. Snow moves to second. Boom to first. 
So we've got 2-1 here for Oklahoma looking to add to their lead now. And with the top of the order coming up, this will not be an easy matchup for Acevedo. Hard ground ball. Oh, that's going to be an error on the second baseman. Vines went right through her legs. That is an uncharacteristic error for the second baseman. Oh, and so an that's, e4 something, that's a play that you have to make. Yeah, an E4, that's a, an error that you have to make because your, your pitcher isn't struggling exactly, but it's not, she's not getting out of situations like you want, and it looks like Lauren Shaw will come in for Acevedo. All right, yeah, we'll have a pitching change. Lauren Shaw will take over for the Bruins. Not that this is out of hand, it is in with two outs, but if you're the Bruins, don't want to take any chances and let Oklahoma pick up momentum. So they're just going to sub in Shaw, who we already saw a little bit earlier today against Mississippi State. And I do like this move by Coach, in a way, Perez, because top of the order coming up, they've already seen Acevedo before, and now Shaw can face the lineup for the first time. And Shaw, a different look, a left-handed pitcher. She's mature. It's going to be her fifth year playing. She's the grad student transfer from Iowa. And Oklahoma hasn't seen a whole lot of her because she's from Iowa. They usually don't play each other a lot throughout the seasons, so they might have seen her only a couple of times. And, of course, a part of that shutout against Mississippi State today. Final score, 8 to nothing in that game. Ended up just going five because of the mercy rules. And so again, the inning. Quick out for Lions. Johns crushes a double. Another out, Donahue flies out to center field, but as a result, that moves Johns along. Heads to third, and then Snow laces an RBI single to score the first run for Oklahoma. Now Snow is at second because of that E4 committed by Anna Vines at second base. Warren Shaw earlier today threw a scoreless inning against Mississippi State, only gave one hit. Off outside, runners take off, dropped by Wiz. I think that's gonna be a wild pitch. And now two in scoring position for Oklahoma. Probably will be ruled a wild pitch, but you know, Wiz, wish she had that one back. It is tough for a catcher to try to block a pitch like that on the outside part of the plate that's low. Yari Jennings in the box right now. And you don't want <laughs> to give her two runners in scoring position. Definitely not. We saw her go yard twice yesterday. Off outside. Yeah, Jennings has actually had a, a home run. Four home runs already on the year. So just by that standard. This is only game three for the Sooners and she already has four home runs. Well, this is game, I guess this is game four, sorry. But still, that's basically averaging one per game. A pitch around her there. Shot kind of throws a four pitch walk. I don't think that was purposeful, but obviously being careful, trying to avoid anything hanging up there results in a free pass. Some of those pitches were pretty close. And I agree, they're being careful, but they have to be careful with Aloe at the plate now, too. There are two outs, though. There's a chance for Shaw and the Bruins to get out of it. That's the thing about Oklahoma is the way that their lineup is stacked. The first five are all Americans. So you might think you got through somebody, and then you see the next person coming up and you think, oh my gosh, is this ever going to end? And the truth is, it really doesn't end. As Alo steps up, already has a single today. That 
That's a strike, an 0-2 count. Great job by Shaw coming back. She walked Jennings on four pitches now ahead 0-2 against Allo. Bases loaded. Sooners up one to nothing. Looking to add some more insurance. Allo at the plate. 0-2, Allo hits one in a right field. And that's caught by UCLA. So somehow, some way, Shaw did a great job. Base is loaded. She left him stranded. So again, this is very reasonable for UCLA. They do have to get through Jordy Ball, who has been lights out for the Sooners. Aside from a few crow hopping calls, some illegal pitch calls, she has been lights out. She has walked one batter, though. Yeah, retired six of seven faced ball. And so Vines and Cora will be up in this inning. They still haven't seen her yet. And then it's back to Perez, who finally, it would be the second go around. Cora, or excuse me, this is Vines at the plate. Swing and a miss. Maura, you and I were talking about how just how good ball has been against left-handed hitters, and this is a heavy left-handed hitter lineup for UCLA. I believe ball has only faced one right-handed hitter so far today. Yeah, just the one in Wiz so far. Of course, she will actually go up against one next in Kura. But that's it. Like you said, lefty stacked. I don't know if that was completely intentional. Might have been with some of the players mixed in there at the bottom of the order, but it hasn't phased her at all. Except for, there's a walk. So she hasn't given up any sort of knock, but there she gives up another walk. It's the second one of the game. And again, against left-handed hitters, that screwball rise ball that she has has been so effective. So I'm not sure if teams will have to combat ball by putting in more right-handed hitters. We'll see how it develops throughout the season. It could be just how good she is against lefties or the fact that they have not seen her before. Curra lays down a bunt. Ball charges in, throws to first, and she is gone. Looks like that did do its job, though. Vines heads to second. Perfectly executed sacrifice bunt. That's exactly what you need from your number nine batter. Able to handle that inside pitch and move the runner over. That leadoff walk could prove costly, especially with the top of the order coming up. Here's Perez. One of four strikeout victims against Ball so far today. Takes a first pitch outside. One oh. Punched foul. Sure, it's starting to cool off a little bit in Irvine as the sun goes down, and it's a perfect way to end this Saturday matchup. Of course, there'll be one other game. Oklahoma came out here to California and say, said, let's get as many games as we possibly can. So they'll take on San Diego tomorrow. Oklahoma playing a lot of games in little days. I believe it's five games in three days. Or Goes four around days, five on games that one does days. Perez. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jill, but I mean, that is probably helpful just to emulate postseason play and all of that for, for these teams as well. 
Right, especially if you put yourself in the elimination bracket, you could play up to three games in a day. And softball is able to do that because of the pitching staff being able to throw quite a few innings because of the natural movement of underhand pitch on that rotator cuff compared to baseball. But that is what you're going to see in the postseason with whether your conference tournament, the regionals, super regionals, and of course the Women's College World Series. And I beg your pardon, I think it's actually six games in four days for the Sooners. Up the third base line, over to third is Vines. Tying run 90 feet away as Perez with a big knock. First hit given up by ball today, just the second hit given up this season. Perez right, so good, places it perfectly down. It seems like neither of these teams are going to necessarily crush it right now, but the Bruins just happy to get over that hurdle, and now they can even the score yet again. Especially Good with in. one out, very unlikely, very unlikely to turn a double play. Strike. They throw down a second. Here comes one run. Vine scores. Tie game. Such an unfortunate play for the Sooners. So in a first and third situation, a lot of teams will kind of throw a magic trick out there. You saw Goodwin try to block, essentially block the catcher Hansen's view by swinging at a pitch. Think of it as a hit and run, except she's purposefully missing the ball there. So that way the runner Perez can try to reach second and draw the throw down to second base like she did. Vines then took off from third, but the ball mishandled by, I believe, Lyons, the shortstop, and that then allowed Perez to go to third. Yeah, just a lot of kind of shaky moments there for Oklahoma on that defensive play. Very unlike them with, you know, Hanson being behind the dish, Lyons, like you said, at shortstop. But Vines just able to race home, and then also now, Perez being so fast, she's at third. Oh, two. Strike number three, that's the fifth strikeout for Ball today. It comes out a big time. And with the chaos of that last play, remember that you can see as she swings and misses that high rise screwball again. But remember, this is the first run that is scored against Oklahoma this season. Gasso, Enoy Perez, both out talking. Gasso's talking to the umpires here. Not sure why, but it's giving Enoy Perez think it's an the, opportunity. I think it's the crow hopping again more because I see Goodwin still with a bat in her hand. Ah, so <laughs> this is the second time that crow hopping has eliminated a strikeout for Ball. She should have, I mean, if you eliminate that, and of course it's a legal pitch, so uh, it shouldn't be a strikeout, but she she should have had three in the first inning as, let's see. Do you see it, Jill? It's minimal, minimal. Yeah, it's minimal. <laughs> I mean, they are nitpicking, my goodness. Yeah, they are. All right, well, that time, definitely out. So she does get her fifth strikeout. I mean, listen, she, according to the crow hopping rule, yes, it was an illegal pitch. She was with both feet off the ground for a quarter of a second. But if you watch any college pitcher, when they move their foot slightly to the side like that, it does happen with most elite pitchers. And that half a second, quarter of a second does not get called often. So I can understand Patty Gasso's frustration. Perez at third, Aaliyah Jordan at the plate. Jordan 
had an incredible batting average. Actually, has an incredible batting average all time with this UCLA team. Six of the 388 average in her career. Off on the outside. Duo off the plate. That's a pitch that a lot of left-handed hitters have been chasing against a ball, and that's how we see them adjusting here, laying off that pitch. This is day territory for Oklahoma with Jordan Wiz Brady being the next chunk of players. 3-0, called strike, paints the outside corner. Ball sets up, 3-1, swing and a miss. She's worked her way back into this count. You can hear the UCLA dugout, a lot of momentum on their side of the tied ball game here. Of course, Oklahoma used to being the situation, they are probably unfazed by it. Payoff coming. This one hit, but it goes right to the glove of Lions. So ball allows one run. However, yeah. finally have some scoring going on. However, it's just the third inning. A lot more softball to play. Feels like we've gone through five innings already with how intense it's been. and. It really has to do with the atmosphere here. UCLA always has a lot of fans, so does Oklahoma. And to have a playoff atmosphere opening weekend is so exciting. Again, it's Shaw. On the mound for UCLA. Took down follow with the bases loaded a huge moment because otherwise this game could have gotten really out of hand and it didn't shot came in composed got through it. Kenzie Hansen right, Shaw did. fielders Go ahead, Maura. Oh, just Kinsey Hansen reached on a fielder's choice earlier today. And I was going to comment about what you said, how Shaw did a great job. She did struggle against Jennings, but against one of the best, if not the best power hitters in the country, Alo, able to force her to fly out with bases loaded. Of course. Hanson, Coleman, Lions is pretty formidable in terms of opponents. count. Cold strike inside corner. Caught looking. Hansen goes down. What a pitch from Shaw. You can hear an equal amount of cheers and boos. A low inside pitch definitely was the correct height for a strike. Looked like it was across the plate there but hard to see. 
And Patty Gasso talking to her son there, JT Gasso, to try to adjust the hitters, but tough to do there. Coleman stepping in the box for Oklahoma as that was a first strikeout for the pitching staff on the Bruins. Pretty rare or pretty crazy to think about that just considering what they did leading up to this game, but that's just how good Oklahoma is. Oklahoma tends to put the ball in play, like you said, and it is impressive that Oklahoma has not struck out until the third inning. Also shows how the defense for UCLA is able to get it done. Right to short, easy pickup, throw to first, stretching out and making that play is Washington. It goes Perez to Washington. Coleman down. Just mentioned how good the defense is and Perez, a uh, fifth year senior, has been lights out at shortstop for UCLA almost her entire career. Brings up Grace Lyons with nobody on here for the Sooners. Shaw's dealing. Ooh, that one beams Lions right in the side. She obviously is going to be taking first there. That presents the go-ahead run. See where it hit her. Right in the pad, luckily. Otherwise, that would have been her tricep area, it looked like. But she has a pretty <laughs> large elbow pad. Able to protect her there. Jenna Johns had a double in the last inning. And that was what really started things off for Oklahoma. Came home thanks to an RBI from Snow. And so she is the only one to cross home plate for the Sooners today. This is the first time she's facing Shaw. Takes one below the knees. And again, Shaw is such a different look from Acevedo. Not only is she a southpaw, but has a little bit more spin than power, more of a finesse pitcher. Duo. Called strike. Outside half. And what I love about Shaw that we've seen so far, and I, I've personally only seen her pitch today. I've never seen her play for Iowa before. She is so comfortable throwing that off-speed pitch with any count. We just saw it there with a 2-0 where you're looking to get a strike, and she's so comfortable using it. 2-1. This one lofted towards the outfield, and it drops in right in front of Brady. As Johns with another hit on the day, they'll hold the runner at third in Lions. Johns able to take a low inside pitch, rope it into the outfield, and you can see Maya Brady try to barehand it, and she and the UCLA Bruins are lucky that the base runner Lions slid into third instead of standing up. Otherwise, she might have been able to score. You could see Coach Gasso at third base trying to wave her in there, but Lions is already going in for her slide early. It's good to be aggressive like that, but at least whenever I was running, playing softball, I wasn't sliding unless I knew for sure the throw was coming or my coach was telling me to. Well, here's the Bruins killer in Donna Who herself. You just heard when she got it to the plate, the Who chance. So she is definitely 
a person to be a little worried about. She flied out in her last at bat. However, she was crushing the foul ball she was making contact with. One, one. There was that change up again from Shaw. That's going to be her go-to pitch, it seems like, this season. So important to keep the timing of a batter off. And if you're a batter, if you can stay on time and stay through the plane of the pitch as long as you can with your bat, you have a really good chance of making solid contact. One, one. Low. Now, of course, staying, staying through the, the plane is a lot more difficult when your timing is off. So that's why Shaw has been fairly effective so far. Pitch. Breaking ball. Two, two, just off the plate. Hello. Full count. This one ripped. Up the middle, one run comes through as Lyons is able to score, sliding into third is Johns and Mackenzie Donahue yet again. Absolutely clutch for the Sooners. Didn't do too much with it. That pitch up a little bit too high. Looked like it was just about underneath the letters. A perfect pitch for Donahue. Seemed like it was over the middle as well. A great piece of hitting. Again, a mistake by Shaw hit back up the middle. No way Shaw could have defended that as a fielder. Sooners take the lead up two to one. And you know, important to note that this is happening with two outs too. Shaw struck Hansen out, got Coleman to ground out, and then all of the scoring for Oklahoma, just the one score, but still all of this hitting and all these base runners have come with two gone. And that is so important for the Sooners to be able to do. You need to be able to come back with two outs, and I think we're going to have a pitching change as well as a pinch hitter. Yep. So we got a lot of changes to tell you about. So for Oklahoma, it looks like they will sub in Lindsey Elam for the Sooners. So that will take Snow out. Elam can play first. And then um, new pitcher in for the Bruins. Looks like they'll go with Megan Faramo. So you're right, Elam could stay in the game at first piece, or they do have an option to bring Snow back in. Remember, when a player is in the starting lineup and they are taken out for any reason, they are able to re-enter. However, if a player is not in the starting lineup and they enter the game, once they are taken out, they cannot re-enter. Elam a captain with this Sooner squad. But interesting because Snow did actually knock in a run already for the Sooners. So she is going to be the one removed. 
And again, Elam comes in just to pinch hit here. We're not sure what happens after this, but she'll have to face one of the best pitchers in college softball. We saw Fermo last game against Mississippi State. She threw four scoreless innings, did give up three hits, walked one, but struck out four. And she is used to facing the Oklahoma Sooners. We'll see who wins this matchup. Redshirt Jr. on the mound for UCLA. She is the third pitcher used for the Bruins. Just a pause here for Rainbow getting set. Of course, uh, one of five players on this UCLA roster named in Softball America's Top 100, and for Amo was number eight in the country as this one slapped back foul by Elam. And well-deserved. She seems to be the ace for UCLA this season. And Coach Inouye Perez said she seems to be really healthy this year and in the best shape of her life. And she used the phrase dialed in to describe her this season. Now a little scary to think about someone being more dialed in than she has in the last couple of years. But Ramo kind of looking to take on that throne from Garcia who graduated last year for the Bruins. And, you know, they're, they're looking for her to be kind of the next woman up in the process and in this fantastic history of UCLA pitching. Rachel Garcia hard to replace, but Faramo up to the challenge. Elam putting up a fight and runners at the corners for Oklahoma. So a chance to extend this lead. One, two, count. Here's a one, two. This one just barely squirts by. It was stopped originally by Perez, but Lions is able to score. Great effort by Perez, a diving effort, but unable to keep the ball in her glove. And again, that was in the five, six hole. Even if she kept it in the infielder made a cleaner play, I think, with two outs, uh, Johns would have scored easily. She wouldn't have been able to get the out at first base diving that way. So it's three to one. Runner at first, runner at second. Two runs have come through for Oklahoma in this inning. So again, Elam reaches on that play. Hard hit, like you said. Nice diving play from Perez. It was just, uh, odds were against her with that one. Pinch runner coming in for the Sooners. Elam comes out, <clears throat> and then it looks like for Oklahoma, they will pinch run Snow. So those two just flip flopping around, and now Snow is at first. And that means Elam is not able to enter the game again. Boone hacks and misses.
you can see a little bit of pace of play issue. The Sooner batters are ready in the box when the catcher, Wiz, is still not in a crouching position. Backwards K. Some momentum. And now forcing UCLA to use their third pitcher. We'll see what happens for the Bruins at the plate. They've got some work to do. Jordy Ball out there again for Oklahoma. Again, she hasn't left. She's a starter for the Sooners and puts them in a nice spot. Just allowed the one run. It was in the last inning, the top of the third. Came off of a walk and then a single. Swing and a miss. A very different look for the pitchers today. Oklahoma sticking with ball through three innings now into the fourth. Meanwhile, UCLA has used three pitchers in three innings. Delaney Wiz at the plate for UCLA. Bounces one foul. Swing and a miss. That is strikeout number six for Jordy Ball. Look like another rise ball from Ball. You could see it just cross the letters and out in front of the plate, it's maybe about belt high. With two strikes, you have to be swinging at that to protect. And it's really hard. There's not really a way to protect against the rise ball except don't swing or just chop at the ball almost. Keep your hands up high. Up and out, Brady, one of just a handful of base runners given up by Ball today. She earned a walk in the second inning, but was left stranded. Now, the way that I always tried to hit the rise ball was <laughs> don't swing at it. I would look belt or below, like that pitch right there, I would have swung at. One, one count. Now, of course, it's not always easy for a power hitter to be looking for a low pitch. Usually you want a higher pitch, and it can also be difficult when ball or the pitcher will be pitching strikes in the upper quadrant of the strike zone. Check to see if Brady went around. Say she did not. Even though Brady only drew a walk in her last at bat against the ball, I feel like she has seemed the most confident and with the best game plan against the ball so far today. Next offering, Brady bumps back foul. Off the plate outside. Strike three, got her on the outside corner. 
back-to-back -back strikeouts for a ball to start the top of the fourth. Make it seven on the day for the freshman. Maya Brady knew it too. It looked like her timing was a little bit off. She stepped a little bit sooner than normal. And then you could see her hip kind of twitch there. She wanted to pull the trigger, never did. Gets rung up looking. Ball has really not tailed too much. Obviously had a bit of a bumpy third inning, but looks really crisp out here in the fourth. Strike there to Kinsley Washington. Only has given up one hit. The run that is scored is unearned because of the errant throw in that first and third play. Up and out. Chopped back, gets through the hole in the left field, and Washington is on the base paths. Washington just found a low outside pitch, able to make contact with, and looked like she was a little bit late. You can be late on an outside pitch like that, and she's so strong, she can she hit it very hard through that 5-6 hole. Brings up freshman Pola. She is the tying run. And we're just in the top of the fourth inning. Same spot, this time Lions dives, throws to second, but she's safe. So in safe is Washington. They try to go for the force out, and instead everyone is safe. I think that was the right call by Lyons with how far she had to dive for that. No way she was going to get Pola out at first base. Second was the only option, but Washington too fast. Yeah. Really a good play by Lyons. If that had gone through, who knows what would have happened. Right. Two outs off outside. Hanson gives a long look. Washington at second, Pola at first. Anna Vines working a 1 0. There's that pitch, goes around. that same high outside pitch against left-handed hitters. I know I've been <laughs> saying it all game long, but that is what Ball is using to sit down these Bruins batters. One, one, way high. Hansen able to jump up and make the grab again. Time's called. Hansen and her freshman pitcher just trying to get on the same page here. Swing and a miss, Vines goes around. Ball just needs one more strikeout to get out of the inning without allowing a run.
2-2. Five stays alive. Good job by Anna Vines. The redshirt junior able to chip away at these pitches. Again, it's her fourth year as a Bruin. She played in 45 games last year, 37 starts. 2-2, Two -two. again, push foul. That nearly hit the umpire on its way back. Now with that pitch, you can see Vines handling it well, able to foul it back. She's keeping her hands up a little bit higher, but just can't seem to get good contact on that pitch. I'm not sure if her game plan is to keep chipping it away until she gets a better pitch, or if she is trying to make solid contact with that. Patty Gasso out to talk to our team right now. Of course, that does include ball, but it kind of looks like she's speaking to the infield a little bit more here. I'm not sure exactly what the message would be. But she seems to be talking primarily to the middle infielders, specifically Jennings, the second baseman. Big spot. And it could see it could have to do with her saying that where they think they're going to throw the next pitch is going to induce a ground ball to second base. See if that rings true. Two two. Swing and a miss. Ball got her. Eight, number three, UCLA by two runs. Baramo back on the mound for the Bruins. First pitch. Perfect. Second offering, another nice breaking ball in there for Faremo as, again, Tiari Jennings at the plate. Just walked today, but she has no hits. That was a great off-speed pitch by Faremo. Again, trying to keep these Oklahoma batters off their timing. O2 off the plate. Unbalanced was the word I was trying to think of. <laughs> They're tr trying to keep the Oklahoma batters unbalanced. It's been a long weekend for us. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> near the end of the Mark Campbell Classic and what a way to end it. 1-2, not quite over as Jennings, just a slow bouncer to Perez at short, although it's a slow roller, the stretch out from first and they nearly, just barely got her. Washington with a fantastic split. Great play by Washington. A slow ground ball, Jennings so fast. Perez, not a strong throw. She knew she had to get rid of that ball quickly. And with any good first baseman that you trust, you just throw it in their general direction and they will do the rest of the work. Great job by Washington. There goes that unsung hero storyline that her head coach, Inori Perez, was talking about this week when we chatted with her on the phone. Washington is not going to get the accolades that some of these All-Americans, like her pitcher, Faremo, is going to get. However, she is, she does the little things, the things you can't measure. Without her, this team is not complete. That is what her head coach has to say, and it must be awesome to know that those things go noticed in practice and in big moments. And there's something to say about a solid first baseman. A lot of people growing up when you're younger in Little Leagues, you kind of just put 
the tallest kid there who can catch a ball. But as you get older in high school and collegiate and professional, you have to have a solid first baseman that your infield trusts because there hits a point where you're diving down the third baseline and you just have to get up and throw the ball towards first base and hope that your first baseman will have your back. And being able to have confidence in your first baseman is so important, and I know Perez feels that way with Washington just by how she fielded that last ball. Of course, Jocelyn Allo at the plate. Behind in the count, 0-2. Here's that pitch. Just misses. One, two. Lalo stays alive. One, two. Swing and a miss. Beautiful, beautiful placed ball by Farimo. There's that rise ball again. Again, started out right around belt level, maybe letters with two strikes. Alla was going to have to swing and missed it completely. So two of the monsters are gone. Of course, Kinsey Hansen is up. 0 for 2 today. Paints the outside edge. Ferremo has just seems like she's in such control of this game. If she's not throwing strikes, they're not missing by much. It's there, it's an 0-2 count as Oklahoma looking to build on this lead that they garnered in the third inning, bottom of the third, went up two. UCLA hasn't been able to score since that top of the third. Swing and a miss. Moremo gives him a chance. We'll go to the top of the fifth inning as... And looking forward to continuing to watch her collegiate career. Yeah, it's just, you know, just allowing that one run against UCLA. Like we said, I mean, UCLA's first game, swing and a miss, I don't think I've mentioned this yet. First game of the season, they played California Northridge outscored them 22 to nothing. Played Nevada, outscored them 12 to nothing. Mississippi State, eight to nothing. So this is a high octane offense and ball just hasn't allowed it to pick up any momentum. And remember that one run scored is unearned because of the error in the first and third play where Vine scored. I think that pitch hit Kura, but it was in the process of her swing, so it will be a strike. Seneca Kura at the plate. Dropped, third strike, throw down to first, Kura is gone. So make it nine strikeouts for a ball. <laughs> Nine strikeouts, 19 in her young collegiate career. Has now pitched 10 innings so far this season, 19 strikeouts. Ready, 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 ready. 
Showing bunt there is Brianna Perez just trying to get something going here for UCLA offensively. Obviously, if she could get on, that would be huge for the Bruins, just the speed she has around the bases. I think they said that she did offer at that. I, I loved seeing Ball point to both corner umpires saying, whoever you have to ask, ask them because she went. A one. This a little dribbler. And it goes right to the first baseman in snow. Apologize, we had a bad angle on that. So it goes Jennings to Snow, but again, just able to handle the bouncer on that. And Perez retired. Wasn't a very hard hit ball. Good job by Jennings. Even when it's hit to the right side of the field, you have to be able to get the ball out of your glove quickly with how fast Perez is. So looks like Lauren Carter is going to come in to pinch hit for Gooden right now. Carter, just a sophomore, appeared in 25 games last year. Only had two at-bats last season, so it's her third collegiate at-bat. Huge moment, swing and a miss. And she is an outfielder, so she could stay in defensively. We'll keep an eye on that for you. Well, this is how you prove you belong. This is how you, you know, show your head coach you deserve more time. So a massive moment for Carter here as a 0-1. Strike. Two, able to hit that one foul. Another aspect of this matchup with Carter only having two at bats in her collegiate career. The Oklahoma staff don't have a lot of scouting reports on her going in blind. 2 swing and a miss. 10 strikeouts. Number one, Oklahoma. Number three, UCLA. For back on, or in the circle for the Bruins. And of course, Jana Coleman at the plate. It's Coleman, Lyons, and John Stewart. Coleman 0 for 2 on the evening. 1-1. One, one. Called strike. Coleman does have the ability to bunt for a base hit. We saw her try that in the first inning. 1-2. Up and out. Baremo, three up, three down, inning in the bottom of the fourth, and that included two strikeouts to Alo and Hansen. Two, two. This one launched towards the outfield, drops in for a base hit right in front of Brady in center field. It's going to be a single for Coleman. 
That is the first time for the Sooners that their leadoff batter has reached base. Grace Lyons. Shells Bunt pulls it back. Cuts and misses. Lions has been a little bit quiet this tournament. Looking back through the scorebook, I don't think she's had a base hit yet this weekend. She has had a sacrifice fly out, though. Oh, two. Rips one. Down the third baseline. Lions heard you, Jill. Moves the runner to second. What's the opposite of a broadcaster's jinx? A uh, broadcaster's juice? A little, a little <laughs> uh, yeah. A little bit of a flair there. She wanted to prove you wrong. Good job keeping your hands inside the ball to be able to find a base hit, her first hit of the season. Jana Johns has been awesome today. She's two for two, including coming home twice for the Sooners. Now she's at the plate with two on, no outs. Goes around the first pitch she sees. Popped up, Wiz tries to track it down behind the dish, but it flies into the stands. Lucky break for Johns. Usually when you pop up a bunt, it's going to result in an out. Luckily the power from Faramo's pitch able to knock it out of play. Two launched and nearly caught by Washington, just sprinting down that first base line. Boy, that would have been a massive play, but instead, Johns goes back to the box. It would have been an amazing play by Washington, although both runners probably would have advanced on that and tagged up. Two pop back foul. Long at bat by Johns. Like you said earlier in this at bat, she has been great today. Both of her hits have been towards center field. Two. This one roped over to third. Throw to second, and it gets behind, but everyone's going to stay put. A good job by Caro being able to catch that line drive. I liked the idea of trying to get the lead runner there. I think it was a little bit 
close where she could have just held the ball and not thrown as he saw that ball got away and could have allowed uh, Coleman to advance, but no harm, no foul. So it's not a double play, but it is an out as that's a win itself. Again, Remo just trying to get out of a jam here. And here comes Donahue. A one right down Broadway. Both pitches to Donahue have been on the inside part of the plate, bottom quadrant of the strike zone. If I were fair, I'd go with rise ball or change up on the outside part of the plate. Oh, two. Got her with the rise ball. Such a nasty pitch. Again, you could see it. It was right at the letters as it crossed home plate, but looked like it was at the belt when she released. That's the fourth K in this game for Megan Faramo, who again, Entered in relief, she's the third pitcher used uh, as a quick little chopper over to Washington at first, steps on the bag. And that ends the bottom of the ball in this game. I'm sure UCLA would like to drive her out. But why would Gasso take her out at this point? See if the freshman can go the distance, why not? It's such good experience for her before heading into conference play. Not many true freshmen get to say that they face a top ranked team in their opening weekend. She's got Jordan Wiz, Maya Brady up against her. A one punched foul. O2, down and out. Again, 10 strikeouts for a ball. It's obviously a career high. She's just a freshman. She's only a couple games in. But I mean, this is just a legend making game if Oklahoma ends up holding on. A 1 2, down and out. Two, two. Again, back into that screen. I wish I could see a radar gun of how fast ball is throwing, because a lot of these UCLA players seem like they're a little bit behind. Definitely feels like ball has thrown some heat today, I think. Hard to tell when you're not there in person, but it looks fast. 2-2. <laughs> this is outside. Excuse me, that was the payoff as a leadoff walk for UCLA. They've done this once before in the third inning. And guess what? They scored the lone run. 
So good omen for the Bruins. Lauren Hatch will come in to run for Jordan. Here's Wiz. Up and out. You know, remember, this is the third time that players are seeing ball in the order, and I'm, I'm sure that affects these hitters. Maybe they can learn something. Third time's the charm, maybe? You'd hope third time's the charm, and it is tough to face a pitcher that you have never seen before. Again, Ball, a true freshman, not a lot of tape on her unless you look at some of her high school stuff, but it is not easy to face a pitcher you've never seen before. That's why sometimes when you're facing pitchers like Fermo and Acevedo, you're going to hit them a little bit better. 1-1. One, one. This one hit. Hi, and that is foul. Oh man, <laughs> that was so close to tying the game up. Instead, just a long strike, an inside pitch. She just got ahead of it. I think Ball might have taken a little bit of something off that pitch. Very long strike. Here's a one two. Fouled off again. Remember Delaney Wiz, a red shirt senior, so in her fifth collegiate career, began her career with Loyola Marymount. This is her third year as a Bruin. One, two, catch on the inside by Hansen. Keeps Hatch where she is. A great play by Hansen, of course, the run that quote unquote matters to tie up the game whiz at the plate, but still maintaining a two run lead versus a one run lead can be huge for a young pitcher's confidence. Two, two. Slice foul again. Quite the battle brewing between Wiz and Ball. Freshman versus fifth year senior. And what's just as impressive is the UCLA dugout keeping that same chant this whole at bat. True. Two, two. Goes for it. Ball is hyped. 11 strikeouts. That was an off-speed pitch outside part of the plate, if not a little bit off the plate even. A defensive swing by Wiz trying to just get a piece of it. Could not do so. Brady at the plate. Takes a strike on the first pitch that she sees. Again, of course, Brady represents the tying run. Oh, 
a one. Van Hansen able to block that. Now you might be thinking, why with the pinch runner are you not sending Hatch? The reason being, again, Maya Brady at the plate represents the tying run. Hatch does need to score, but she is not the go-ahead or tying run, so no point in being aggressive and maybe getting a, her thrown out, caught stealing. Brady punches it foul. All steps back on a one two count. One two. Gets behind Hansen, hatches off to second. Should be a wild pitch on ball. It was way outside and low in the dirt. Hansen, who has been fantastic behind the dish, unable to get to that one. But again, the run that matters at the plate. Three one. Again, foul. Hatch moving over to second also takes away the potential of a double play. Swing and a miss. 12 strikeouts for Jordy Ball. It's another high outside pitch. I think that one more of a screwball than a rise ball. But man, Jordy Ball has been spectacular for the Sooners. Kinsley Washington beach last time. She was up, two outs. Still Hatch patiently waiting at second. One oh off outside. Not sure what Coach Rocha saw, but she immediately sprinted out after that pitch, wanting to have a conversation with Ball. Of course, Washington, a dangerous count. hitter. Right. Duo. And foul. Or strike. Two one. Perfectly placed. 2-2. Two, two.
Kinsley Washington is the Bruins batter you want up in this situation. One swing of the bat could tie up the game. 2-2, two -two, off the plate. Now we have not seen anyone hit a long ball yet in this contest. It's been a low scoring affair, obviously a pitcher's duel because UCLA, I mean, holding Oklahoma to three runs, that's really impressive. Ball's been better. Three, two. A stunner. Up three to one on number three, UCLA. And again, Shorty Ball, just a freshman. So much room to grow. She is going to be potentially the new face of the Sooners pitching staff. That went foul, so we'll do it again. And Faremo has been so good in relief for UCLA. I mean, she's come in, she's got four strikeouts. In the last inning, she quickly gave up two hits and then retired the next three batters she's faced. She's been awesome. It's just so unfortunate that for UCLA, that ball from playing the way she is, it's just one of those star-making performances, and sometimes you're just on the wrong end of something like that. Right, usually for the UCLA team, if their pitching staff can hold the opposing team to three runs, they're going to be able to put up more than three. This one slap back. Faremo throw across. Her and Washington combine to send down Riley Boone. And Faremo fielding her position well. Not always easy for a pitcher to come down and backhand a ball like that. Wasn't hit very hard, a two hopper, but still a good job by the right handed pitcher. Jill, maybe this is a dumb question, but Gasso's going to leave ball in, right? I am not good at predicting that with coaches. I mean, I think it'd be almost rude to take her out. Let her right. finish off this game. She deserves a complete game here. She has been a workhorse. I'm not sure what her pitch count is. They haven't been keeping track of that, and that could be a factor. They don't want to overwork the freshman, but if I were Patty Gasso, I would let her in. She deserves it. Yeah, also seems like it could be risky, right? Because, you know, this is not a UCLA team that's often held to one run. So if you throw someone else out there, even though you trust your staff, it still could just become out of control. UCLA gets some juice, feel more confidence, and suddenly we're talking about a different scenario. So you have to imagine she'll throw her out there unless, like you said, pitch count or something else comes into play. You might Cassin keep her on a short is. leash. Right. Maybe walks a batter, take her out, gives up a leadoff hit, take her out, but she's also proven she can work out of jams. Walks the leadoff batter in the last inning, and then mowed down the last three batters. O2. Patient there is Jennings. Quiet today. Just walked in the second. It's the only time she's reached. Otherwise, 0 for 2. One, two, back to the screen. One, two, floats up that first base side, tracking it down in foul territory. Washington puts two gone.
despite how good Jordy Wall has been, I, I know we've already spoken a bit about Megan Faramo. I do want to reiterate just how dominant she has been as well, if not as dominant as Jordy Ball. We just have seen Ball in longer today. This will be a very important out if Faramo is able to get it would keep her team in a good spot heading into the top of the seventh inning. Obviously, they would like to be down two versus being down more than that. Not to get ahead of ourselves, but I wouldn't be shocked if Coach Inoue Perez puts in quite a few pinch hitters with the bottom three of their lineup due up in the seventh. One one, cuts and misses. So the main Johnson difference Otto. between Faramos, between Faramos, and Ball's rise ball is Ball's is a little bit more inside with some spin coming in on the batter. Faramos seems to be just straight upward movement. One two, off the outside. Yeah, Faramos is comes up really high and. It just, if you're just watching and, and you just saw it for the first time and someone swing at it, you think, oh, that looks silly. But it's just, if you watch in slow-mo, the way that hitters see it, the movement is insane. Somehow that gets through on the third base line. Alo is able to get a single. Alo with his her second hit of the day, able to just make it work with that pitch. Didn't make great, uh, didn't make great contact with that. And I beg your pardon, I misspoke. Obviously, was not a hit, as that will be an error. But able to make something happen, and that's what good teams can do. Now it's up to UCLA to make sure that error is not costly. Kura. Commits the error, error at third. Went right between her legs. So, Kenzie Hansen up to the plate with Alo on first. Looks like they will have a pinch runner come in. The Sooners. Anna Kaur takes over. Tough day for Hansen at the plate. She has struck out twice. One time swinging, one time looking. The swinging strikeout was against UCLA's pitcher right now. Faramo's been awesome. A one. Punch back, foul. 0-2 count. Faramo's only given up three hits today. If it wasn't for that error that Allo reached, he would be in the seventh inning right now. O2, right back to Faramo. She bobbles it. Everyone's safe. They throw to third. Poor gets there. Wow, so unlike UCLA. The ball's hit in the infield. It's usually going to result in an out. Just got done earlier this inning saying how good Fermo is at her position fielding-wise and just making an error there, unable to help herself out. She's going to need her teammates to pick her up right now. Two errors in a row for the Bruins. Well, runners at the I corner. would love to know. I would love to know the last time that has happened in UCLA, UCLA Bruins history. Back-to-back -back errors. Yeah. <laughs> really, it's almost impossible for us to look that up. <laughs> but it has to be a while. 
Coleman at the plate. Massive moment for Oklahoma trying to add some more cushion, heading into the top of the seventh. Tries a slap, right back to the hurler, and a stumble. Safe. Oh my gosh. Feels like the wheels are coming off for the Bruins. I wanna try to see that play again. The umpires are probably coming together to see if they think that Washington had control of that ball at first base to result in an out. I couldn't see if she did or didn't. So this brings Lions up. Let's see it again, a little drag bunt. Fermo was there, she had to wait for Vines. That what ha that's what happened. She had to wait for the second baseman, Vines, to get to second base in time. And Vines was a little bit late on that bunt. Because of that, she could not handle it. I think the ball would have beaten Coleman, but Vines could not hold on to that ball. And the umpires had the right call. She did not have complete possession for an out. And of course, Coor scored on that as well. Obviously, we didn't see it, but Coor did race home. It is four to one. And it's just three miscues in a row now for UCLA in a major moment. It's a three run lead for Oklahoma and there's runners at the corners. Swing and a miss, throw down to third. Hunter's gonna move to second on that one. It is that same sort of first and third play. You see that a lot in college softball. The runner on first will advance to second, trying to draw the throw this time. Wiz threw down to third base to hold the runner. Swing and a miss. Lions down 0-2 in the count. So again, Alo, Hansen, Coleman all got on an error and scored. Of course, uh, one run came through. It was Core who had pinch hit for Alo. And now there's two in scoring position for the Sooners to build upon this lead. Two gone, an 0-2 count to Grace Lions. Swing and a miss. Despite all of the chaos, UCLA gets out allowing score to run without having to report a hit. So it's Pola, Vines, Kura. That's the bottom of the order for UCLA. We'll see if that stays throughout. Now, of course, this is Pola, and ball starts with a strike. 13 Ks for the freshman today. Outstanding for Oklahoma. And I mean, the word outstanding is an understatement about this true freshman. She has been a powerhouse so far. This one ripped but right into the glove of Snow at first. And of course, when your defense makes plays like that behind you, it's easy to maintain that confidence with a three run lead. Jordy Ball, I cannot say enough how impressed I am by her as Snow seems to be a little banged up. I think she either hit her knee or maybe rolled her ankle there. So Vines will come up for the Bruins, reached on a walk and actually scored the lone run of the day for UCLA.
Bunt. Hanson picks it up, throws to first. Vines gets there. Boy, blinking you miss it there for Vines, a successful bunt. Interesting decision by Hanson. You could see she waited for a second to see if it was going to go foul and realized it wasn't, so she picked it up and threw it. If you're not going to pick it up right away, don't even bother throwing it with Vines running. What Hanson should have done was continue to see if it would go foul. And once you realize it's not going to and Vines reaches first, then go ahead and pick it up. No reason to throw the ball in case you throw it away and that will allow Vines to reach second. Kura at the plate. Of course, we're not at the tying run conversation yet. A little pause for Kura. I also want to point out something that just noticed on my scorebook. Everybody has struck out against ball today. Not one player is unscathed in that regard. Not surprising at all. Ball has been so, so good. Again, that rise ball screw ball that she has against left-handed hitters has been unhittable. Trickles up the third baseline and foul. Again, a one one count. Ball just trying to end this right here. Showed Bond, pulls it back. It was a low pitch anyway. With Vines getting on first base, what this does for the Bruins, it'll more than likely allow the top of the order, Perez, to come to the plate. That's providing Kura doesn't hit into a double play, but with their speed, that should not happen. To one, hacks and misses. Long stare in from ball here. Big moment. 3-1. A bunt. Right to ball. Backhands it. Throws to second. Off to first. And they get the one out. It cuts off Vines. Eliminates her from the base paths. And a fielder's choice, Kura will replace. What a play by ball. It is not easy for a pitcher to come off. She came out of the circle, backhanded it, turned around and threw to second base. Just her awareness of where she is on the field, her athletic ability. She, she could be a shortstop. That's how athletic she is. Down with her final out, UCLA against number one, Oklahoma. Hack and a miss. Brianna Perez at the plate. A one goes around on a pitch outside. Down to their final strike, the Bruins. Perez is one of the few Bruins hitters who's had success against Ball. She did single back in the third inning. O2, poetic strikeout number 14. Oklahoma wins. <laughs> 